Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway here today. Talk another position group for K State football ahead of the upcoming season. We'll flip sides of the ball and focus defensively with the defensive ends. This is kind of an interesting group because there are departures from last year. There are guys that decided to come back for an extra year. There are newcomers. There are guys that have kind of been waiting in the wings and now might take on a greater role. Uh, there's a lot with this group, and it feels like this is another one of those positions where I don't think you have to worry about the talent being there for K-State. It's just it might take three, four, five weeks to figure out, okay, these are the the four or five guys that are going to go out there in this order and who's going to step up and kind of carry the load at defensive end. So how do you see this position for K-State uh, in 2024, Drew? It's kind of like wide receiver that we talked about a few days ago where I think there's a lot of depth and potentially the most depth again that uh, K-State has had under, under Chris Plyman at the defensive end spot. But I'm not sure if there's somebody that I can point out and be like, that's a guy that's going to be like a bona fide stud uh, to start the season, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, especially at defensive end. I think that having as many bodies as you can is kind of like the, the way to go about it. And how they have changed the defensive end position too really intrigues me. Like we're seeing new and bigger body types at defensive end, which is going to be even better, uh, I think, than kind of what we saw last year with Khalid Duke and Brennan Mott being a little bit undersized at defensive end. So kind of getting Mott more and more uh, stronger. And really the, the additions of... Uh, Travis Bates and Malcolm Alcorn Crowder can play defensive end or defensive tackle and having guys like Chidi Obi Eiser get bigger and Ryan Davis and Jordan Allen get bigger and Cody Stuffelbean get bigger. I mean, that's six or seven guys right there that I'm like, hmm, all of those guys could end up having a role on this year's team. And I think that that's more than we've seen really ever at, at K-State. I mean, that that's six or seven guys that could play I think against UT Martin even. So uh, Jordan Allen is probably the one of the first names that I want to bring up because that was a, a pretty exciting get for K-State when it happened. I think just like days before the 2022 season kicked off is when he committed. Um, what What is your expectation for him as we go into this first year where he's probably going to get significant playing time? I, I think expectations – for Jordan Allen, just being a redshirt freshman, you're probably wanting to just continually to see improvement and be a good rotational piece that can come in. And like, I, I hate saying this because th this is really how defense works in my brain is like, don't be the guy that screws up. Like, don't be the reason that the other team scores. So I think that if he can come in and really be a contributor for, 15, 20 snaps a game. I think that even if the stats aren't really there yet, I think that that's a big improvement because you want to get him on the field and kind of get him acclimated because he's probably one of the best athletes on the entire defense for him, if you take into account his size. It, ha, I'm trying to think of the best way to, to phrase this for you because like, I, I think there are a lot of guys that are set up in a good spot and are going to be pretty productive for K-State at this position this year. But if you had to pick, kind of like I made you do with the receivers, but and this one you can quantify even more differently uh, and, and more your own way uh, than the receivers because, you know, receivers, we actually have numbers in front of us that go, well, that guy looks like he did quite a bit. Uh, but in your eyes, who do you think will be the, the two most, maybe disruptive is the right word, defensive ends this upcoming like season? That. Ooh, this is tough because there's so many ways that you can quantify disruptive. Uh, but the first guy that really comes to my mind is somebody that has been talked about pretty much since he arrived at K-State, and that's Travis Bates. I think that he is due for a monster first season. I think that it might take him a little bit to get acclimated to the Power 4 level, uh, but the way that the K-State coaches – uh, rave about him the way that I've heard some insider sources rave about him. 
I, I think that he could be somebody that really takes off and is probably and could be one of the better defensive ends by the end of the season. Uh, the other guy, th- this is where it's tough because, like I said, there's probably six guys that you could potentially choose from. Uh, I think that I would lean towards TD Obeizer. Uh, I think that he he was just a little further along than Jordan Allen last year and has even more size than Jordan Allen does. And, and I think that he could be somebody that could be really, really disruptive because he's in that like 280-pound range already and can play that heavy defensive end spot but also isn't like totally overwhelmed uh, and not able to rush the passer. So I'm really interested to see kind of how both of those guys uh, work off of each other, because I think that those two, if those two plus Jordan Allen and Brendan Mott are kind of what we think that they are, I think that the defensive end room is going to be night and day from what it was last season. So if we're talking disruptiveness, it's weird. I I feel like for whatever reason, Maybe it's because they go through lulls in games where it feels like you're not getting anything in terms of pressure from the the defensive line, uh, and then they'll you know come through and they'll have a stretch where it's like sack, sack, you know, broken up pass, all this other stuff, and they, they're getting there, they're affecting the quarterback. Um, but in terms of obtaining consistency and being on a certain level, where do you think that this defensive end production this upcoming season should rank amongst? We'll just make it simple and say all of the the climbing teams. Uh, so since 2019, where do you think this defensive end group would rank? Uh, in terms of overall talent, it's probably second or third. Uh, number one, probably behind 22, because I mean you had a you had a first round NFL draft pick as a as a defensive end there, and then. I could hear an argument with 21 and this team, like just going into it. Uh, But I I think that they're on paper. It looks like they'll be able to be more disruptive because of the size difference. I mean, you look at the defensive ends last year in case it had, I believe Brendan Mott was in the 240 range. Khalid Duke was in the 235, 240 range. Nate Matlock was in the 240 range. And then now you look at the defensive ends where Brendan Mott, I believe, is now in the 250 range. Chidi Obeizer is 280. Travis Bates is in that 270 range. Jordan Allen is that 260, 270 range. You you see the size transformation. And I think for me, that was kind of what was holding K-State back at the defensive end spot last year because they kind of got away with having a little bit undersized defensive ends uh, in 22 because that was just how good Felix and UDK Uzama was. Uh, was he was able to really take on the double teams and it didn't really matter because he had such heavy hands and such powerful hands that he was able to still rush the power, rush the quarterback effectively. Well, now this year you're, you have more size. I think that Uso Samalo will probably, will hopefully be more healthy so he can really kind of take some pressure off in the middle because I think that's something that was really lacking last season too was uh, defensive tackle play being more effective because remember Eli Huggins uh, in 2022 was one of the best defenders uh, I think in the entire league if you're really looking at the nose tackle spot you have Malcolm or Alcorn Crowder that can play on the outside or the inside and be a disruptor and if he's a disruptor on the inside that just opens it up more on the outside uh, so I think that they're looking to be able to be more effective this season and it, it's a it's a size thing and also a talent thing because i think that they have a lot more talent in this defensive end room now than they've had in the past and that kind of just goes with everything else we've talked about with k-state recently it feels like the the talent in these rooms is getting deeper and deeper uh this is more about defensive ends but real quick in terms of the guys on the inside and how that's going to end up working out um, what do you anticipate from how that group ends up working hand in hand with the defensive ends? I think that they can really work off of each other, and, and it's because of the size and how disruptive Uso Sam Allo is when he's fully healthy, and how disruptive that we think the Malcolm or Alcorn Crowder can be, and, and even Damian Olalio isn't probably your prototypical size for a nose guard in the three three five, but. It you knows how to use leverage and can really be a disruptor. So they, those two really work off of each other. 
And I think that that's something, like I said, that was really missing from last season's team because uh, Eli Huggins was just so good at being disruptive. And I think that that really opened up Brendan Mott and Felix and Uzama in 2022 just as much as Mott and Felix opened up stuff for Eli Huggins. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Last year, just they we knew that they were searching post 2022 to find some answers in there, and they just didn't seem to have enough guys. And they you know they they tried going the Javon Banks route, but he just couldn't get himself big enough to play that position. He's just going to end up being a bigger defensive end, and that's why uh, he ends up moving on. So it'll be fascinating to see how the defensive line plays this year because I think that's really been the key in most years for K-State's defensive success. That seems to be the one area where they can always hang with other teams, uh, even when you know Texas and Oklahoma were in, in the Big 12. K-State was able to have edge rushers that were – just as impactful and important. I realize you shouldn't say yeah, it's just defensive line players in general. K State's been really strong in that regard for a long, long time. Uh, so you know it was noticeable at different points last year that they couldn't get that pressure at times when it was necessary. So we'll see what it looks like for K State this upcoming season. But that will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more on the Cats, head over to On Three, find KStateOnline.com. Drew and DY will keep you in the know, and we will be back again next week to uh, start it up all over again, see what else is going on in the world of K-State football and basketball. So we are out of here, and we will talk to you again on Monday, unless for some reason there was some out of the, you know, I don't know where uh, commitment over the weekend. But I don't anticipate that happening, right, Drew? You know, No anticipation of that? Not, not this weekend, no. Okay, all right. So Drew is saying next weekend he expects something. That, that You heard it here first. He's on the record saying that. We are out of here. Dream about the commitment that K-State is getting next weekend, not this weekend, according to Drew Gallagher.